Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna explain and break down how the formula for arc length of a curve is actually derived. So let's say this right here is a graph of a function of x, y equals f of x. And we're trying to find the length of the curve from point A to point B. Well, obviously we can't just do that as we would do with a linear graph because it's not a straight line. So uh, what we're gonna do is, let's just use this point for example. Then we're going to draw the line tangent to this point. So ideally this would be a lot smaller, but I just have to draw it so it can be visible for demonstration purposes. So this, the whole point is this line is very close in length to, to, the, to the actual graph from the same x value to the same x value. So we use basically the added lengths of these tangent lines of infinitely small lengths to find the length of the curve. And how we do that is, um, oh, and basically uh, this line is called DL. And so we're just gonna make a right triangle with this being the hypotenuse. So just like that. And now this is the change in X or DX, and this is the change in Y, DY. So, now that we have a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean Theorem. So, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But we're just going to rewrite that using, um, using these new variables right here. So, dl squared being c squared equals dx squared plus dy squared. But obviously, to isolate dl, we're just going to square root both sides. So we get dl equals the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Okay, so back to what I was talking about earlier, about how this can represent the actual length of the curve. In order for that to be accurate, the length of each of these tangent lines has to be infinitely small. And the way we do that is simply by integrating. So the length equals integral of dl, which is square root of dx squared plus dy squared. And notice I haven't put a dx after the integrand like we usually do. Because, well, that, that'll just come in a later step, you'll see. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to factor out a dx. Um, actually, a dx squared, sorry. Um, and obviously, you can, or not obviously, but you can factor out a dy if the function you're dealing with is with respect to y. But it's more convenient to factor out a dx in, in this case. So, what's going to happen is this becomes integral of the square root of, so you factor out the dx, right? dx squared, sorry. So the first term, you factor out dx, out of, dx squared out of dx squared, so it just becomes one. And the second term, we act, there actually isn't a dx squared. So when you factor out something, it's just dividing. So this becomes dy squared over dx squared right so this is what it becomes but then remember the square root of the square of dx is simply dx so we move the dx to the outside and that is where we get your respect to x term or whatever you want to call it so this becomes one plus and then remember that dy squared over dx squared is the same thing is dy over dx squared and then the factored out dx squared root of that that moves out to here so it's just dx so oh and then last thing you're gonna add your um, limits of integration which is a to b so this is how we get that generic arc length formula of L equals integral from a to b of 1 plus 
dy over dx squared with respect to x. So this is basically um, just the derivative of the function that's respect to x. So if your function was with respect to y, at this step, you would factor out a dy squared instead, and you would end up with 1 plus dx over dy squared dy. So it's just the same thing. So yeah, that is how the formula is derived. So now that you understand that, hopefully it makes more sense when using it to find the arc length of a curve.